so um, yeah, it looks like a, looks like you're sharing your screen. Looks like uh, audio is pretty good, um, and uh, we'd love to hear more about the uh, the website and what you have planned. So uh, feel free to start uh, when you're ready. I guess like yeah, maybe oh. talk about yourself or introduce yourself or whatnot. Okay, great. Yeah, and I can actually, um, I'll stop sharing for now so you can see me. Uh, should I wait until uh, the hour starts? Um, I mean, we're like 30 seconds out, so I think I don't think it really <laughs> really matters that much. Okay, but feel free. Great. To <laughs> well, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. I know for many of you, it's uh, getting pretty late over there, uh, so we really appreciate you being here. My name's Christine, and I'm a UX or user experience researcher. Uh, I'm here in California in the United States right now and uh, here with my teammate, Lisa. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. I am currently in New York and I'm also a UX designer. Great. Um, I will go ahead now and share my screen. Okay. Uh, is my screen showing? Can everyone see it? Yep. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. Um, so, again, I'm Christine, and I'm here with Lisa, and we're working on redesigning LibreOffice's website. And so today we're going to share with you the process that we are following to improve the user experience or UX of the website so that LibreOffice can continue to support the people who make it up and make it what it is. So have you ever gone to a website for something particular, but you weren't able to find it and it just left you feeling really frustrated? Well, uh, when I first became interested in joining LibreOffice's community, I wanted to learn uh, more about the design community because I'm interested in UX design. And so I want to walk you through the experience that I had. Uh, I started here on LibreOffice's homepage of its current website, and I didn't see any information off the bat about its different communities. So uh, I'm going to go to improve it. And then I'm going to go to what can you do for LibreOffice because it sounds, uh, sounds interesting to me. All right, so then I see what area interests you? Marketing? I think marketing is interesting, but I'm looking for UX design. So I'm going to say, uh, show me something else. OK, next, what area interests you? Advocacy? Okay, take your time. Come on. Uh, I'm going to say next, please, because again, looking for UX design, uh, user support, uh, getting close, but still, I'm going to say, show me something else. What area interests you? Development. Um, can't code at all, so I'm going to go with whatever. All right. Yay. Uh, finally, user experience design. So tell me more. Okay, design open tasks. Not quite sure what that is, but yeah, tell me more. Okay, and I end up on, a, it looks like a wiki page on design and blueprints. So, um, hmm. so in that instance, <laughs> this is me. And I am, I was very confused. I have no idea where I am. Uh, I'm lost and I don't know what's going on. So this is a prime example of an experience that can be improved. 
So what is UX? User experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, its services, and its products. So what does UX have to do with LibreOffice? Well, LibreOffice's website is over 10 years old now, and it needs a fresh look. But this is also a great opportunity for us to help improve the user experience of the website, because really, LibreOffice is about the people who make up its community and use its products. And so it only makes sense to redesign its website from a human-centered approach that keeps the user in mind at all times throughout the UX design process so that, again, LibreOffice can better support its people who support it. So the UX design process involves five different phases. The first is empathize, which involves doing research to learn more about the people who use the website. The second phase, define, is uh, about taking the research findings and insights and then using them to define who our end users are and the problem that they have that the website redesign will be solving for. In the ideation phase, that will involve brainstorming potential solutions to that problem. Next would be creating a clickable prototype. And then finally, testing it on users. And uh, that's an iterative process. So there's no such thing really as being quote unquote done. <laughs> uh, starting out with the first phase is empathizing with our end users. So again, that's doing research uh, to understand more about them. And in our case, we did user interviews. So we interviewed people who were currently involved in LibreOffice's community as contributors and also who were using its products, as well as people who are not involved in the community and use competitor products. <laughs> And so we wanted to know what user, who our users were again, and then what their goals, motivations, frustrations, and challenges were in using the website. So Lisa will explain what we did next. Thanks, Christine. So in the define phase, we analyze our research findings into insights or key takeaways about our users. We break apart and analyze or synthesize user interviews to find key insights. We then use those key insights to create personas, to define the problem and to help guide our design principles. Personas are fictional characters based on research to represent the different user types that might use LibreOffice. These personas help us understand the user's needs, experiences, behaviors, and goals. For each persona, there is a specific problem that we address. So we have two personas. One is Mia, a potential product user. Mia needs an easy way to learn about LibreOffice's products and compare them to her current tools to decide whether to switch to LibreOffice. We also have Avery, the contributor. Avery needs a simple way to explain what LibreOffice is about so he can expand the community and product usage. After we have our personas and problem statement, we move on to creating design principles. Design principles are principles unique and specific to the company that serve as a guide for the brand and define the key characteristics of a product to both users and to those creating the product. Design principles help designers have a consistent vision of the product across the entire organization. Because LibreOffice already had design principles, we needed to incorporate our design principles into LibreOffice's existing design principles. So LibreOffice's design principles are usability over graphical design, consistency over efficiency, simplicity by default with full functionality. We added our own design principles of collaborative, fosters a sense of community and belonging, informative, easy to find and access, private, respects and protects the user's privacy. 
These principles embody the spirit of LibreOffice and will guide us in our design direction throughout the design process. Next is ideation. With persona problems and design principles defined, we move on to the ideation phase where we come up with concepts. The ideation process usually starts off with creative brainstorming exercises to get the creative flow going. The goal is to get as many ideas as possible, followed by referring back to the persona, problem, and design principles to narrow them back down to main concepts. Here are some of our concepts. Each concept addresses a persona need. So concept one, videos and tutorials are an easy way for Mia to learn about LibreOffice's product and community. Concept two, comparison chart. A comparison chart for users to compare Office Suite software and features help Mia decide whether she wants to switch to LibreOffice from her current Office Suite software. Concept three, choosing a community. An interactive quiz to help users choose a community, this helps both potential users like Mia and contributors like Avery learn about the LibreOffice community and find their areas of interest within the LibreOffice community based on their skills. Concept four, member dashboard. Concept four, a member dashboard with groups, interests, skills, and project details. This concept helps contributors like Avery get to know each other or get to know other contributors and share his own interests and skills, as well as track his own contribution on existing product projects. Concept five, community map. This helps Avery facilitate engagement with other members of the community by letting him see who's online and where and the ability to direct message them. So some of these concepts are not new. If you go to the current LibreOffice website, you will be able to find some of these features already. However, our goal is to make the features more discoverable. And again, as UX is an iterative, never ending process, we will continue to improve upon the features by providing a more complete end to end experience for the user. For next steps, when our, our concepts are finalized, we will start wireframing, which means drawing up mockups of the screens and add interaction to create a prototype users to, for users to click through. We will also perform usability testing to get comments from users about the usability of these prototypes and make iterations before a final design is submitted to development. Now we bring it back to the most important thing about LibreOffice, the people who make the community. Here is what we heard from one of our community members when we asked, what do you like about being part of a community? Can you guys hear? Uh, no, we unfortunately <laughs> cannot hear the audio. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we can, those of you who can't, um, obviously should probably refresh, but we'll put that in chat. Okay, so and, I will. <laughs> and it'd be good if everyone can mute their microphone except for the speaker. Continue, please. Okay, so I will just go ahead and read the quote because the audio isn't working. Um, my favorite, so this is from Silva. My favorite memory with LibreOffice is related to my experience as the organizer of the LibreOffice conference in Tirana, Albania. When you're a part of the organizing team, you're always running to fix what's broken. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm on the wrong slide. I will go back up. So the first question 
is my favorite memory. Oh, never mind. I'm on the right side. Okay. My favorite memory with the Libre Office is related to my experience as the organizer of the Libre Conference in Tirana. When you're a part of the organizing team, you're always running to fix what's broken, which is quite tiring, and you don't really get to know get to enjoy the conference days. Our special moment started after when everyone was signing up for hosting this event. I remember the closing part, and we were invited on stage, and everyone was applauding. It was a very special special moment for me. I felt quite appreciated. And to my surprise, it didn't end there. Because for the next three to four weeks, everyone from the community would keep thanking us on the mailing list and on the Telegram channel. I've never been that proud in my life. It was worth all the hard work. So hopefully these quotes have inspired you a bit. As you can see, Libre Office is about the people who make up its community and use its products. So it only makes sense to redesign its website from a human-centered approach that keeps the user in mind at all times. By making its website more user-friendly, Libre Office can better support the people who make up its community and use its product so it can continue to further the OS, OSS mission. So here are some ways you can help. Help us improve LibreOffice's website by participating in our user testing. We will give our emails out in the next slide. Join LibreOffice's community, be, a bigger, be part of a bigger cause, and as contributors, infuse design thinking and follow a human-centered design approach through the development process. So here are our emails for those interested in participating in our concept or user testing, we would really value your input. Christine at Christine Louis 3 at gmail.com or me, Lisa, hey, Lisa Lynn at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you. Um, yeah, any questions, please uh, go ahead and. Uh, Ask them now, and we have time because there's a, there are no more um, events in this room. So please take your time. Yes, and, uh, I have a question. My name is Olivia. I has been interviewed by you, uh, uh, Christine. Uh, just a, uh, a simple question. Is this discussion going to be uh, public in a mailing list or any form of um, uh, access to this uh, new design besides your own uh, emails and? Um, yeah, you know, it's something that we haven't um, made available yet but it can be and um, again it'd be nice to have participants for user testing too so that uh, the community can be involved yeah thank you uh, uh, lisa would you mind uh, shutting off your camera because there's a bandwidth uh, constraint that we want to kind of keep to And if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to ask. Do you think you will open the beta testing for the site, like an A B test, when it's more public or so? Um, yes, great question. Uh, we do plan to do some A B testing and uh, you know, compare uh, some of the new concepts that we've been coming up with to um, existing ones. So yeah, great question. Uh, I have another question, Olivia speaking again. Um, is the uh, design of this uh, new uh, uh, website, you, you have listed two different personas. One is the uh, pure End user that that needs information. The other one is someone that is uh, that wants that wants to be more involved. 
are we going to have a single entry point uh, where uh, the decision of the persona is done by navigating uh, in the web pages? Um, another great question. <laughs> Uh, we are not quite there yet in the design process uh, to know we haven't we don't have any firm uh, designs yet because those are what will be tested next with the concepts. Uh, but you're right, there are this is a multi user website. Um, and so part of what we'll be doing is designing different ways to present information to those two different audiences. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. I'm, I, I actually have one quick question. Um, when you're developing these, these personas and you're, you're coming up with these, these use case applications um, and what people are kind of like coming to that site for, is there anything that could be done through imagery that um, could help solve that and answer a lot of those questions within imagery and a quick look because not everyone will read everything so um, has that been given any thought uh yeah that's another great question um yes for um part of our concepts that we're testing is you know exactly what you said how testing different ways that people um, absorb information and hopefully quickly by just uh, coming onto the site. And so we're looking at images and videos, uh, like video tutorials and um, variations of that, like maybe uh, images like a slideshow kind of playing in the background. So we'll be testing those to see um, how people like to learn what they want to see when they come to the site. Have, I'm not quite sure how helpful this would be, but have you ever looked at um, EOS design system? Um, no, but it sounds interesting. And I think you said it's EOS design system. Yeah, it's actually a project that a friend of mine started, but um, oh, okay. it's, I mean, it's it's just worth looking at. I mean, I, I can't fully get into the details, but um, um, it's something I think maybe you could consider looking at in your design. Yeah, thank you. We're we're always open to feedback and ideas, so we'll definitely take a look at that. Yeah, I put it in the link in the chat. So. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Well. Um, so I guess that's uh, that's it for this room for the day. I want to thank everyone for their patience uh, for the, throughout the day and and, and um, especially their attention uh, to to all the speakers. And I want to thank all the speakers for taking the time to present and give us all new information um, about the projects. And um, hopefully you learned something. Um, and then tomorrow. Uh, you know, as far as things go with the conference uh, tomorrow, just please subscribe to the Telegram channel or have watched or listen to the IRC channel, uh, the LibreCon IRC channel. And um, anything that's pinned on the Telegram channel, I think would be useful because that's what we're going to, whatever's very important, we're going to gonna pin it. So um, the next talk that will be taking place in room one after Neil's talk, that's right happening right now, will be uh, from Philip, and it's going to be about um, static composition and analysis of containers and VMs uh, and other root file systems. So, I want to thank everyone and uh, have a good morning, night, day, wherever you're at. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot.
Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.